well. So for this week, if we remember, um, we need our bat and our ball, as always, and then we also needed some items that we can kind of use as like skittles that we can knock down. So I've got like empty bottles will be perfect. Empty toilet roll tubes will be fantastic as well. So just give you a second or two to make sure you've got your bat to hand, your ball or your rolled up pair of socks and some items that you can use to knock over because we're going to need those today. So plan of action for today's session is traffic light game to warm up. Hopefully some of you've probably done MPE before. We're going to do like a cricket version with our ball and practice our throwing and catching skills. We're then going to go on to target throwing. So a little bit harder than last week. Obviously last week we were aiming into our box or our basket. This week our targets could be smaller because we're trying to knock down our, our makeshift skittles. And then our batting game at the end, similar to last week, but again, even trickier. So instead of hitting the ball through our target, we're gonna be trying to hit the ball to knock down our skittles. Okay, so for the warm up, you just need your, whatever you're using as your ball. All right, and it's traffic lights. So if I say green light, we're gonna be moving around our room. We can jog if we've got space or maybe just walk in. And as we go, we're gonna throw and catch our ball as we walk around for green light. If I say amber light, we're going to be hopping on one leg, but we're going to be throwing and catching the ball as we are hopping. If I say red light, that's when you get to rest. You're just going to pause and freeze and stay nice and still. And um, I'm going to add in one more for now. If I say speed bump, you're going to do a squat. You're going to jump up. Oh, I hit my line. You're going to jump up and you're going to throw and catch the ball. So be careful what you've got around you. All right, so are we ready to go? Let's start with green light. So throwing and catching the ball as we move around the room. Remember, if we've got space, then you can do a jog to get your heart rate going a little bit faster. Speed bump. So that's a throw and a jump and catch. And then carry on with green light after. Amber. So that's hopping on one spot, throwing and catching as you hop. So keep it going, still on amber light, so still hopping. Green light, so back to our jogging around or walking. If we're finding it easy, we can maybe try just some one-handed catches as we go on green light, just throwing and catching with one hand. So remembering from week one, make sure you keep your eye on the ball watching the ball all the way into your hands, even as, even as you move around the room. All right, red light. So you get to freeze there. So on our next one, we're gonna add in a new traffic light. So it's gonna be reverse. So if I say reverse, you might have guessed what it is. You're gonna go backwards. Still throwing and catching your ball, but you're gonna be moving backwards around the room. So you've got to try and be really careful of what's around you. And oh, I'm going to add in one more as well. We're also going to add in something called roundabout. So if I say roundabout, you've got to try and throw the ball up, spin around and catch it. OK, so that's roundabout is our spin. So we're going to go again. We will start with reverse. So we're going backwards. Throwing and catching the ball. Remember to challenge yourself if you're finding it easy. You can go one hand as you're reversing around the room. You might even like to try your weaker hand. So if you're right-handed, you can try your left hand. If you're left-handed, you can try your right. Let's try speed bump. So you squat and jump and catch. And green light. So we're going forwards this time. Roundabout. So ball goes up, we spin, and we catch. Roundabout. Again, spin and catch. Amber. So remember, amber is hopping on one leg. How long can we do this for on amber light? To keep hopping on one leg, 
without having to put our own foot down. So we're still on amber. So keep hopping, keep throwing and catching. And let's go reverse. So you're going backwards. You're going backwards around the room. And green light. So remember on green light, we can test ourselves. Can we throw it from one hand to the other as we go around? If we're using a ball, and if we can, depending on your room, could you bounce it on the floor and catch it as we move around on green light? You might be able to come up with your own ways of moving around whilst throwing and catching the ball. Let's go roundabout, spin and catch, speed bump, that's our jump and catch, reverse, we're going backwards, so keep going backwards, we're still in reverse, speed bump, amber, so that's our hopping and catching, and red line, all right, so hold it there. Hopefully we're feeling a little bit warmer and we managed to keep up. We had a lot of instructions in there, so I hope, hope you managed to keep up there. I think Claire's put them in the box there for us. We've got a few more have joined us since I was on the screen, so hopefully we all managed to jump in with that warm up there. So next activity is going to be our target throwing game. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your items that you're using as skittles and you're going to line them up on you're going to line them up in your room on the floor so just like i'm doing here you might want to spread them out a bit more than i've done depending on how much space you've got and then if you were on who hopefully we were on the call last week or you've managed to check out the video on YouTube, can you write in the chat box for me, what do we need to do with an underarm throwing again? What things do we need to do to throw underarm? So to help you out, what might we have to do with our arms to help us with our aim? Do our legs do anything when we throw underarm? Do they move? So you're gonna have a quick think. You can maybe talk with your grown up if they're there with you. And then you're going to type in the box for me. So it's the technique for underarm throwing. What do we have to do? So even if you didn't tune in last week, you might know this anyway from some of your PE lessons. Do we know the technique for underarm throwing? What do our arms have to do? What do our legs have to do? So let's see if we get any comments coming in the chat box. So give us, I'll give you 30 seconds or so to get some answers in and then we'll get going with our throwing game. So is anyone sure? Or if you're not sure, you can write not sure in the box and then I know and then I can explain it. If there's nothing in the box, I'm not too sure. So not sure, that's not a problem. So let me know if anything comes into the box, Claire, just whilst I've um, stood up because I can't see. So underarm throwing. So we're going to have three key things we're going to do now. One is your non-throwing arm. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to throw with this hand. The arm I'm not throwing with, I'm going to point it out and I'm pointing it towards the target I'm aiming for. And that's gonna help me with my aim. That is gonna be my guide for my throwing arm. So my throwing arm is gonna come up from underneath, because we're doing underarm today, it's gonna to come up alongside my non-throwing arm to help me throw the ball nice and straight. And the last thing I want you to do, hopefully we can see, is I want you to take a step towards your target. So we're not just gonna stand still and throw like this, we're gonna to step towards our target, okay? So then things we're gonna be doing as we throw, and hopefully that's gonna help us to be able to knock down the targets we've set out. So just give us 
So as quick as you can for me, make sure you've got your target set up. Then, depending on how much you want to challenge yourself, if you're closer to your target, it's going to be a little bit easier. Or if you come further back, then it's going to be more challenging. Okay? And we're going to have four minutes on the clock to have a little go at throwing and trying to knock down the targets. Okay? So, off you go. So your, your grown-ups can join in with this one. If you've got somebody there with you, you can take it in turns to have one throw each. Or what you could do is get your grown-up behind the targets. So once you've thrown the ball or your pair of socks, they can give the ball back to you. So remember the key things we're looking for here to try and help you knock down your target is non-throwing arm pointing out towards the target that you're aiming for. Our throwing arm comes from by our waist, comes up alongside the non-throwing arm, and our leg steps out to help as well, and it steps out towards the target. If we're really far back, then we do really need to, need to make sure we get that step to give us some power. So if we don't have enough power, our ball might not reach the target. So keep going with that for a couple more minutes and then we're going to have a little challenge to see how many we can knock down. So hopefully we're going all right with that, managing to hit some of our targets. So remember things you can do if to challenge yourself or maybe make it a little easier is adjust the distance you are away from the target. So the closer you are, it should be a little bit easier or you can move right back and make it harder for yourselves to challenge yourselves. If you're struggling, make sure you are getting that arm out to help you with your aim. Also, it might help, if we find it difficult, it might help to move our target so they're actually closer to together. Or if we're doing really well, we can spread our targets out kind of across the whole room and that'll make it a little bit trickier. So you can kind of adjust this as, as you like to make it right for your level. We're gonna go for one more minute of your little practice. And then what we're gonna do is have a minute on the clock to see how many times we can knock down our target. So whilst this is going on, just a little reminder to the, if the grown-ups aren't taking part in this one, that these are our social media channels here. So if you are happy to and wanna take any pictures or little videos, it'd be fantastic if you could share them with us on any of our social media channels using the hashtag there, Barking Bash. That would be absolutely brilliant. So to make it easy to access, Claire's actually put in the comments box there, the links to our social media. And if you're watching this back on YouTube, I might actually put the links in the description of the video. So check that out. So last 10 seconds practice. And then we're gonna have challenge time. We'll see how many we can knock down in a minute. All right, so stop there. Hopefully we're able to hit some of our targets. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna reset them up. So you pick the distance apart that you're gonna put them. I'm gonna time a minute on my watch and you have to try and knock down as many as you can in one minute. If you've knocked down all the targets that you have, then just set them back up again and keep going. So you keep on going for the whole minute and then when the time's up, you're going to let me know how many targets you managed to knock down in the chat box so I can see how we've all got on. All right, so you've got 10 more seconds just to make sure you spread your targets out. And make sure you've got your ball. Okay, and our one minute is going to start in three, two, one, and off you go. All right. 
So if you've got to collect your own ball here, make sure you're moving nice and quickly to collect it again. So the faster you collect your ball, the more turns you'll get in a minute and the more chance you've got of knocking down more targets. So you've had 20 seconds so far, so you've still got 40 seconds left. So even though now it's a competition and we're rushing, you still need to make sure you're taking aim. You still got to make sure you're stepping into your throw and bringing that throwing arm alongside your non-throwing arm to help with our accuracy. You have got 20 seconds left. So remember, if you've knocked them all down already, reset them again and keep on going. 10 seconds left. So great work. Hopefully you've managed to knock some down. Three, two, one, and zero. Okay. So in the chat box, let us know how you got on. How many did you knock down in one minute? So we have got scores coming in. So well done. We've scored four. Very good score. We had a few fours in the last group. Somebody got 12. That's an amazing score. Well done. Knocked down seven. Brilliant. Would have been a toy car. Knocked out the toy car six times. Fantastic. So we have got some good throwers in our 430 group. Well done. Excellent stuff. I think that's all the scores coming in. So, brilliant. Next activity, I'm just going to stand up here. Hopefully you can see me. So, we have got some fantastic throwers in our group. We, now we're going to find out if we have got some good batters in our group. So, similar to last week, we are going to be either using our batting tee or we can have the ball on the floor that we're going to hit from. So you're going to lay out your targets again, just like you did for the throwing. And this time, you're going to be using your bat to hit the ball, and you'll be trying to knock down your targets with the ball. So the key things to remember here is, remember from last week, we grip the, uh, the bat handle with two hands. We have our stronger hand closest to the bat. We stand sideways on. So even though our targets will be out in front of us here, my toes are actually pointing this way. So we're sideways on, and like with our throwing, we step into our shot before we swing. So it's a step and a swing. So what you're gonna have, we're gonna do the same as our throwing. You're gonna have a little bit shorter though. You're gonna have two minutes to kind of practice, and then we're gonna have our one minute challenge again. And whilst you're practicing, I want you to try and work out what do you have to do with either your feet, your hands, or your back to be able to hit the different targets. Because unlike last week, our targets are going to be spread out now. They're not going to be straight ahead of us. So get all your targets set up. So you've got two minutes on the clock. And we're going to start that two minutes now. So just to be clear, so you've got your targets laid out like you did a minute ago. You've got your ball and your bat and you're swinging to hit the ball and you're hoping that the ball is going to go on to knock the targets down. Remember, we're always hitting with the flat side of the cricket bat. And what I want you to try and work out, because our targets aren't all in front of us now, hopefully you spread them out. What do you have to do differently with your bat to try and hit the targets? How do we get the ball into different areas because if we just keep swinging straight, we're only ever going to hit the target that's straight in front of us. So have a little go at trying different ways of trying to hit those different targets that are spread out in the room. You've got one more minute to see if we can knock these targets down. So don't worry if you haven't managed to hit any, because this should be this should be a little bit harder than the throw-in, trying to control the bat to hit the target. So it should be a little bit trickier but you still got 50 more seconds to have a practice. And then we're gonna do our one minute challenge again to see how many we can get. So hopefully you're, try you're starting to work it out now that you might have to change the angle of the bat to hit certain targets. 
you might have to change the way the bat swings, the angle that the bat swings down to hit the different targets if they're not directly in front of us. You might even be kind of changing where you step. So remember when we're stepping kind of towards the targets, we're not always going to step straight, straight in front of us. So you've got 10 more seconds. And then we're going to reset and we're going to have our one minute challenge. So three, two, and one stop there right hopefully we got on okay there we got used to directing the ball into different areas with our cricket bat so make sure now that you're resetting your targets up again and just like before we're gonna have one minute on the timer and you are going to try so this is batting still you're going to try and knock down as many targets as you can I would imagine your score will be less than your throwing score. It might not be, it might be more, it might be the same, but do not worry if it's lower because I think this is a little bit harder. All right, so we're going to have one minute on the clock. So quickly make sure your targets are set up if you haven't done that yet. And our one minute is going to start in three, two, one, and off you go. So make sure we've still got our two hands on the handle. Always make sure we're still striking the ball with the flat side of the bat. And I want you to make sure you're stepping into your shots, even though our targets are in different directions. So hopefully you worked out from the practice that you might need to change the angle of your bat to hit the targets that aren't straight in front of us. You have got 30 seconds left to see if you can knock down any of your targets. So really well done if you've managed to hit some so far. This is tricky, this challenge. You've got five more seconds. Three, two, and one. Right, if we come back to our screens and let me know. How did you get on with the batting challenge? Was it harder? Did you get less? Did you get more? Did you get the same? Somebody got four. That's fantastic for the batting challenge. Well done. Got five this time. Much, it was harder, wasn't it? Much harder. So well done for getting five. Didn't get any. That's what I said. That might happen. So it's really hard, this one. So not to worry. Somebody got the same score. So that's really well done. All right, we've got to wrap up now. So, somebody, yep, same score. Brilliant. So, really well done to everybody there. Um, so, hopefully, you really enjoyed today. So, we've got next week, so we've got, we're going to have a different warm up. We're going to do some uh, movements with the ball. We are going to do a little game, Strictly Come Catching. So, there's going to be lots of catching challenges. So, that'll be really fun for the second part. And then we're going to finish with a back control game next week. So hopefully you're looking forward to signing in then. Also, don't forget on Thursday, you have got your wellbeing webinar. So it's still happening, even though it's half term. That's going to be about sugars. So that would be a really interesting one to sign into. And one last reminder about our social media there. You can give us a follow. If anyone did get any pictures, I would love to see them. Because obviously I can't, I can't see you guys doing the activities on Zoom. So it'd be brilliant if I'm able to see some of your pictures there that you can share with us. I'm gonna stay on for one more minute just because Claire's put the, um, the links into the chat again there. So I'll just stay on it if anyone wants to click on those. Um, and yeah, if you can put any feedback you want in the box here whilst I'm here for one minute. Somebody just said, thank you, see you next week. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Have a nice half term everyone as well. We're on half term at the moment. So I was saying, I'm not sure we can be up to much, but whatever you are doing, hopefully you're enjoying yourselves. So I'll give it 30 more seconds if anyone wants to click on those social media links in the chat box. And then I'm gonna end the call and I will see you all next week.
All right, so you're welcome, those that have said thank you. See you next week. Enjoy the rest of your half, half term. Bye.